Hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Abdullah Kamil, and today I'm going to be showing you how to create dependent drop down lists in Excel. Uh, so uh, I'm going to first show you how the end product works and then I'm going to show you how to design it yourself. So if you, we look at the um, if we look at the table here that we have and we um, add the date okay just a simple table with food types quantities and uh, food and if we move to the food type column you can see here that we have a list and in the list we have vegetables or fruit if we select vegetables and we go here under uh, food column and we can see also we have a list and immediately we can see that we have vegetables all of the vegetables okay and there's no other item uh, in the list other than vegetables if we go back and change it to fruits then the list will dynamically change to display uh, only uh, fruit and as you can see here you have apples bananas and uh, blueberries and stuff and if you go back change it to vegetables the same happens and you go back to the vegetables list so uh, this is how it's going to look once you finish um, uh, your design so where would you need uh, to use this okay um, normally you would use this uh, feature if you have a long list and navigating through that list to your selection can be, you know, uh, time consuming because the list is too long. So what do you do? You divide it into sections and our sections here actually vegetables and fruit. So the list will be divided into those sections. OK, an example of that would be if you work in a company uh, in HR and you want to create you know a table where uh, you want to select certain employees you might want to divide them first by department okay so first you select the department in here and then once you select the department only those employees in that department will be displayed here so the list will be much shorter and you can immediately find um, the guy you're looking for Okay, so now let's look at how we can design the dependent drop-down lists ourselves. So the first thing you need to do, you need to have uh, master lists for your vegetables and for your fruits. And if you have more lists, you can add them here, okay, uh, in, in columns, okay. And they need to be adjacent to each other because we're going to use the headers as the food type list, okay. So now let's uh, first convert the first list to a table, okay? So we select uh, the whole list, including the header, and then we go to Home tab to Format as Table, and we choose a color that we like. And make sure that my table has headers being selected because we do have header here, which is vegetables. And go ahead and change um, the table name from table one to something more meaningful but make sure that uh, the table name is not the same as the uh, column header here uh, especially for this case because that will make problems later on if we do so let's say we're gonna name it TBL veggie okay so this is the vegetables table and for the fruit table, we do the same. And we name it TBL fruits. Okay. Okay. So, and let's add an S here. So it's table veggies. Okay. All right. So now both lists have been defined as tables. So we can refer to them later on. And now let's create our food type list. To do that, you select the headers here, because we're going to use the names here. And we go to formulas, you go to name manager, and you click new. And you write here food types. Okay, make sure you don't have any spaces because they are not allowed. And make sure that the range actually corresponds to 
the headers that you have for uh, your um, master list okay and press ok and now your um, first list has been defined and as you can see here it's food types and the value is vegetables or fruit okay the other thing now is to define the uh, vegetables list and the fruits list uh, separately so you define each one of them um, separate from the other okay so to do that you press new and um, me now you need to make sure that the list name okay for vegetables for example need to be the same as the header of the column okay or the header of the list because the f uh, if you remember the food types list is um, you know is created by using the column headers here and now what we're gonna do we're gonna name the whole uh, list here with um, the same as the column header okay so later on when you select the food type you can use that name you know to bring the list that contains uh, the vegetables okay so now the uh, list of the vegetables rather than locking it to a range you know that might be different from time to time okay what you need to do you need to refer to the whole column so no matter how big this column grows how many items you add to the vegetables list you know uh, later on Excel whenever you call for the vegetables list it will bring the whole column and we do that by writing the table name which uh, TBL veggies and then between square brackets you write the uh, column header vegetables now you're referring to the column um, of the table here so no matter how the uh, column grows it will always bring it to you and this is really useful uh, we do the same and as you can see here you can see the value uh, is correct and you do the same for the fruits so we're gonna name it fruits and it has to be the same as the column header there fruits and we refer to the column which is TBL fruits TBL fruits and now this is the table name and the column name is fruits and we close the uh, square brackets and we hit OK and we can see immediately that okay the list is actually bringing us what what we need so uh, okay so we have our three lists defined now what we need to do we need to design our um, table where we track the uh, food quantities so we have the date and we have the uh, food type and we have a column for food and then we have a column for quantities and the first thing you need to do here is to format it as table and make sure my table has headers selected so now we have a new table and formatting your range as a table is always a good thing because whenever you add new rows here at the bottom the table will immediately uh, you know uh, expand to um, to contain the new rows that you add and it will also apply any settings that you have in the previous you know uh, row in in the table so you don't have to drag formulas every time you don't have to uh, redefine data validations it will all be inherited you know by the new row okay so let's add our date here and let's now define the list here so rather than writing it ourselves we need the list for the food types we go to data validation rather than allowing any value we allow only a list and we know that the list name is food type without spaces right okay and we hit okay food types okay I made a mistake 
food types. Okay, so we have vegetables and fruits. Okay, so let's select one of them, vegetables. And for the food, we need to have also a list here. But the trick now is we need this list to switch between, you know, the two lists that we have created. Okay, so if we select vegetables here, we need to uh, display the vegetables list. Okay, and if we have fruits, we need the list available here to switch to the fruits list. Okay, so we do that by going to uh, data, data validation, same thing. And now what do you do is you do the same uh, list. And in the source now, you need to write something that use the value here in the food type and based on that value it switches between two lists okay so uh, the way to do that is um, to use the indirect function a very useful function in fact so the indirect function what is it going to do is it going to take the value here under food type and then it's going to ask excel do you have something called fruits and excel will come back saying yes i do i, I have a list called fruits and uh, it will bring it okay and it will be available under food and that's why if you remember uh, earlier on we said we need to have uh, the uh, fruits list and the vegetables list to to be named exactly and as, as the column names because the columns are used the column headers are used for the food type list and that's where the match happen okay so what we're going to do, we're going to say indirect, and then we're going to select here C3. If we leave the lock, which is the dollar sign here, it's locking the, uh, cell, it's locking the cell. So it's locking the uh, column and it's uh, locking the row as well. If we leave the lock, you know, this function will be only applied to the first row. And this isn't something that you don't want. It's going to give you error for the uh, other rows that you add in your table. So uh, make sure, and this is a must, that you remove any locks that you have on um, on your cell. Okay, so this is simply the function, indirect C3. And hit OK, and you can see immediately that based on what you write here, which is fruit, indirect function is gonna ask Excel, do you have something called fruits? And he will say yes, and it will bring you back the uh, fruits list. If you change your mind and you say, okay, I want the vegetables list, it's going to look and it's going to bring you the vegetables list. Okay, let's select one here. Now, see how we worked on only one row. And if you come here at the end of the table and actually outside of the table, okay and add another record and let's say now uh, it's second of uh, of january and um, you hit tab or enter okay you can see immediately that the table expands expands to include the new row that you added okay and you can select now fruits and you can see immediately also that the list has been inherited by the new row okay it wasn't available before okay and this is you know one of the good things of using uh, you know of formatting your range as a table and from fruits here you can select you know um, whatever few, uh, fruit that you have and add quantities and do whatever you like with it um, if you add another row um, and le let me explain this I mean Come here now, there is no list here, okay? But if you add something, it will be immediately added to the table. So the table will expand, you see? So the table will expand to include, you know, the new row that you added, okay? And the same thing, it will also bring any formats or formulas or data validation that's already been applied to the table all right 
Okay, so uh, this is how to create dependent drop-down list. Um, I hope you like the video. Um, if you do, please subscribe if you haven't done that before and tell your friends about it. Okay. <laughs> anyway, uh, thanks a lot for listening and please come back for, um, for things like this in the future. Thank you so much.